Okay, so we have uh, the last section in chapter 14, and it's uh, quite extensive. It's called the method of Lagrange multipliers. It's a way to find extrema for functions. And uh, really just cutting to the chase is you look off to the side here in a two-dimensional uh, kind of a level curve perspective. You can see that if we have two functions, uh, f and g, but g has a constraint, g of x comma y is equal to some constant, and if we'd like to maximize or minimize a function f while g is uh, set equal to a certain value, you can see via these level curves, you know, uh, we're certainly having points of intersection, but where would F be greatest? Well, it would appear that we'd be right here at this blue point that I've just marked. It would appear that at this point, we would have the same tangent line for both curves and the same normal line. Uh, and this is uh, what the author does to maybe guide us into a three-dimensional perspective as well. Let's just say that we had uh, a, a level curve, a level curve, uh, and uh, we were trying to optimize uh, another function. Perhaps it's a function of x, y, and z. Perhaps it's a sphere. Well, imagine that that sphere intersects that level curve somewhere, uh, and and we'd look for the greatest z value, uh, the greatest function value for which that could occur. Uh, you would probably surmise that. Uh, that sphere and the, the level, cur level surface, excuse me, would share a tangent plane and a normal line. And that's what's driving this whole section on Lagrange multipliers. Uh, we're going to have one function uh, that has a constraint. It, it's equal to some constant value, and we can think of that as a level surface. That's our G function. And then here's our other function, F, that we're going to try to maximize or minimize, we're going to assume that they would have the same tangent plane and normal line at each point of contact. So what we do is if the tangent planes uh, are going to be the same, then the gradients, uh, vectors that are perpendicular to the plane must be parallel. Remember back in chapter 12, Parallel vectors just mean that they are scalar multiples of one another. Uh, there is uh, some constant multiplied to one vector that would be equivalent to the second vector. This constant that we're going to assume that we have is the Greek letter uh, lambda. And it looks uh, just like we have in this highlighted form. So what we'll do is we'll uh, set the gradient of f equal to lambda times the gradient of g. g is our constraint function. And uh, this box right here summarizes the method of Lagrange multipliers. To find the maximum and minimum values of f subject to a constraint g, which is equal to k. Uh, and again, we're going to assume that our gradient of g is not zero. And we have a level surface of g of x comma y comma z equals k we're going to set uh, the gradient of f equal to lambda times the gradient of g, and at the same time, we're going to have our constraint. This will yield a system of equations. Once we solve the system of equations, we will evaluate f at all the points uh, that are solutions to that system. The largest uh, function value f would be the max value of f, and the smallest would be the minimum. Let's do a quick problem, and you can see that we're going to find extreme values, the biggest and the smallest uh, function values f, while we're on a circle. And uh, you can see why this can be very, very helpful. Uh, our circle is going to be our constraint. We're going to say that, let's assume that g of x comma y is equal to x squared plus y squared equals 1. Uh, we can envision this, perhaps, as our constraint equation. And thankfully, we're even down uh, a variable. We don't even have uh, 
a function of x, y, and z in this regard. And of course, over here, we have our function as well. So let's find our gradient, gradient of f. Well, what's the derivative of f with respect to x? Well, very quickly, I hope we'd agree that would be 2x. How about our derivative of our function with respect to y? We would quickly get 4y. How about our gradient of g? Well, very similar. Uh, we can look at this as uh, just saying that we'd have the derivative of this function with respect to x. We'd get 2x. Over here, we'd have 2y. And uh, what we're going to do is set up the gradient of f is equal to lambda times the gradient of g. And of course, this is going to yield two equations. We will have the x component, 2x, is going to be equal to lambda times 2x. Similarly, we're also going to have our y component, which is 4y. Well, 4y would equal lambda times 2y. But this is the uh, additional equation that students very often forget. We also have our constraint. That constraint is very important to be used as part of our system. Well, hopefully you can see right here, when I have 2x is equal to lambda of 2x, immediately we could divide out our 2s and just have that x is equal to lambda x. I could subtract lambda x from both sides, and I could very quickly factor out an x. Now this will lead us to either x equals 0 or 1 minus lambda equals 0, meaning lambda would equal 1. And uh, at this point, I do want to really point out the constraint equation over here, that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. We can use that right now to help us. And if x is 0, we have y squared is equal to 1, so y would equal plus or minus 1. This is going to lead us to possible critical numbers of 0, 1, and 0, negative 1. Well, we also had the situation where lambda was equal to 1. Well, now, if lambda was equal to 1, we could actually substitute that into our other equation here to get 4y is equal to, well, 1 times 2y. Very quickly, we can see if we subtract 2y from both sides, that y would equal 0. Well, again, we could go back to x squared plus y squared equals 1 and see x squared plus 0 is equal to 1. That would yield x is plus or minus 1. So we would get the following additional answers of 1 comma 0 or negative 1 comma 0. So these are all of our critical numbers. I hope you can see that we could have solved this equation uh, starting off with y just as well, uh, but we would eventually arrive at these four critical numbers regardless. Okay, so what we have is uh, optimizing f. If we were to optimize f, f is x squared plus 2y squared. So we just have to substitute these values in. Okay, so substituting these values in, we could see that f of 0 comma 1, well, that's going to be a 2 f of 0, negative 1 in the same regard, that's also going to be a 2. f of 1, comma 0, well, that would be a 1. Same thing with f of negative 1, comma 0, that would also be a 1. What are we seeing? Well, we have a local max, or we've got a, uh, we could just actually call it a, a max of 2 at 0, comma 1, and 0 comma negative 1. We could certainly call that a local max. We've got uh, a min of 1 at 1 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. Okay, we're going to stop here and actually go to the second problem in our second video. But hopefully you can see where we're going with this.